basically the greatest place in the world is this little theater. Uh, Sydney, you ready? Yes. All right, here we go. Drum roll, please. <laughs> and the last scores for the class of 2023. Blue team, 24.5, and red team, 30. Of 2023, I can't also my throat, so like just deal with what you can get. Yeah. Class of 2023, congratulations. You put in the work and made it to the other side relatively unscathed. I can't even begin to understand how each of you are feeling individually at this moment, so I'll start where I do now. I've spent the past four years thinking about what I'll say when I graduate, the first words I'd utter once I've shook the last hand in the line, once it's all actually over. I hoped it would be something remarkable, meaningful, something that I can be sure to carry with myself into life, some kind of moral code to live by. Truthfully, the only word I find myself able to say is awesome. That's probably because it's my favorite word. I don't even remember the first time I heard it. It's been a long time for sure. On a day-to-day -day basis, I'll say things like, it's awesome weather today. Hey, your outfit looks awesome. I actually turned in that Kegley assignment on time. Super awesome. I'm sure you have one, one of those words that squeezes its way into every sentence in your vernacular. Words that trend. For our parents, things were always tubular. In the 1950s, our grandparents went around saying things were peachy keen, and technically, they all mean the same thing. Something that's sick is also cool. Something that's cool is equally rad, but my favorite word is awesome, because unlike all of the other trend words, awesome is meaningful. Awesome has history. It means causing or inducing awe. The first recorded use of the word awesome dates it back to the 1590s. To put it in perspective, that's 320 years before the Titanic would even sink. Back in those days, awe was actually a bad thing. It was dread, fear of something terrible. Now, it's clearly got a much different connotation. It's a centuries-old game of telephone. Awesome, which now means good, used to mean bad. Very bad. Why am I telling you about the complicated history of some random word? Because to me, it's important. 400 years ago, someone created the word awesome. They gave it a definition and a purpose, and 400 years since then, it's been changed. A common misconception with history is that it's a collection of stories that have already passed. In actuality, history is a living, breathing study of life. Things are always changing and shaping and developing. In the history of your life, you've had 20 different hairstyles, 12 different favorite bands, and three different best friends, and you're not done yet. You'll become a new version of yourself by the end of the month. By the end of the year, you might have different beliefs, different favorite foods, different outlooks on life. The things that are important to you with this exact moment will become a part of your history, your ever-growing history. Everything has history. Every word, every person, even this very own campus. Think of your time here at Fullerton. Every piece of that you stepped on, every door you've opened, every desk you've sat at as a part of it. And as we get ready to say our goodbyes, we are too. Before there was a class of us, there was a class of them. Years, a hundred years before you walked into your freshman class, there was someone else doing it before you. The desk you carved your name into was someone else's. Your locker combination memorized in someone else's head. Your lunch table belonged to the memories of someone you've never met. And we as humans don't even take the time to consider the history of the world around us. That's because it's incredibly hard to imagine life before the one we know it. Even when we try and think about it, it's ludicrous. Imagine Rose at RAs. Rose is, Rose is like this lady at our school who's like 89 years old and she still works here. Uh, imagine Rose at our age. I mean that literally. Imagine what kinds of things she does on a day-to-day -day basis. Imagine her taking her English exam. Imagine her sitting in the bleachers for a pep rally. It's laughable, right? We have a hard time with permanency. That's the idea that something exists infinitely, even when we aren't aware of it. Even though Rose had an entire life's worth of memories, we never saw it, and therefore, we don't recognize that it's real. I graduated and the first thing I said was that it was awesome. You had an idea in your head of what awesome meant, but to me it was more complex than that. It had 400 years worth of meaning. To me, the word awesome is richer than it was to you because I took the time to learn where it came from. 
The world is yours for the taking, and I encourage you to do everything you've ever dreamed of reaching. I also encourage you to stop every once in a while and look around you. I guarantee you'll find that every part of the world has a complex history, a series of events leading it to where it is today, making it exactly what it is. I don't know what the rest of your life looks like. I don't even know where you're going. If you ask yourself how you're feeling, you'll find some way to answer. Ask the person sitting next to you and they might have a different one. If you ask me, well, I'd tell you that it's awesome. I know that we're eager to get up and experience it all, so here's my final two cents. In 1503, a young man just graduated. He's our age and he's excited and anxious to see what he can accomplish in the world. He has an entire life of memories on his belt. He's going to go out and make more. He might go out there and give a whole new meaning to a single two syllable word. In 2023, someone could be doing the same and it could be you. Thank you. We're here at uh, Burger King. Austin has a, a sandwich. I have the uh, crispy chicken king sandwich. It's called the Royal Crispy. Looks yes. delicious, nice and crispy with a Spider-Man drink and some delicious fries. So here it is. Get a nice look at that. Yeah. Very uh, juicy, nice big tomato on there. Full spite, going in. You need a napkin to pack. He packs. Wait, I need to unveil that on camera, wait. He said another bite, why would you do this? You're holding up your mother's burger. The guy eats at least two to three bites before he talks again. It's a very long time. Very crispy, and the bun is very buttery. Nice texture. I approve. Right. What do you give it? What number? Uh, I'm going to give it a seven. It's not as crispy as the old sandwich, the chicken, which was a nine. But we're really here for the Spider Verse Burger. Spider Verse Whopper. Rachel wanted to so It's basically said, a regular Whopper. She said it matches her hair. However, it comes on a red oh, bun. Look at this thing. Is that me, Austin? Um, yeah, so I'm excited. Oh, and you get Swiss cheese, which normally doesn't come on a Whopper. All right. Bye. 17. All right. Rachel's now going to eat the Red Whopper Spider-Man vs. Burger. Going in. Mm. Yeah, the Swiss cheese makes it taste so much different than a regular Whopper. So it is different? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm feeling a little crazy today, so I got the big fish with nothing. I mean, look at this. Does this look as appetizing as a hockey puck? You know, we're going to go see The Little Mermaid this week. Are there any square fish that this would have come from? I don't think so. Show off that shirt, pal. Get over it. Big fish. students um, and the only honor society recognized by college and universities worldwide. Um, these students um, put in a lot of time, energy, and talent into everything that they do, especially for our theater program. Um, over the last four years, they've had to maintain a 3.0 GPA or better, earn scholar designations, become an honor thespian, which means that they have 600 service hours um, this in the last four years, and many of them have over 1,200, 1,400 uh, service hours. So if they could come up here and accept their honor cords from the International Thespian Society, um, and then stay up here because I have a special presentation of our Drama Booster Club scholarships as well. Uh, if I could have Alexis Helmer. <laughs> Haley Cronin. <laughs> Ian Platzker. Ryder Tucker, Sophia Galvan, and Sam Rosas. Thank you. 
Go, Ryder. It is also my pleasure on behalf of the Drama Booster Club, um, a group of parents who raises about $50,000 a year, not only to give away in scholarship, but to support the program here. And they have designated three of these students to receive a special scholarship. Uh, the first person is a scholarship of $500, and that goes to Sid Rosas. <laughs> to Lily McWaters. And another scholarship of $1,000 goes to Alexis Help. These are really incredible future leaders, and I have been so proud to be on their journey. So congratulations to you all. You deserve this and more. And now I would like to introduce Sydney, Cindy Ortiz, who will give out our publication honor awards.